And they said to me, you know what, Mike, there's an election coming up, and you talk about all this stuff, and you talk about making a difference. Are you going to run for town council? No. There's a hockey arena at the Volmer because my son plays travel hockey. The next day, this parent brought me an application and said, listen, do it. And I ran, and I won. So here's the opportunity that you folks have. If you never put on a uniform, it's not for everybody. But you've got to recognize a few things. You have rights and freedoms that have been paid for in blood. You have expectations that we have of you to be the best you possibly can be as Canadians, the best you can possibly be as people, the best you can possibly be as human beings. Because when you do that, the sacrifices of everyone's name who's inscribed on a wall or on a monument means that you recognize it. I'm not telling you to say that war is good. I'm not telling you to say that war is right. I'm not telling you to say that it was politically proper. But I am telling you to say this. Embrace what you've been given because there's a hundred and some odd thousand young men and women who don't have the chance that you have because they put on a uniform and died somewhere else so that you could be here today. And if you're the one who becomes the next Prime Minister, or you're the one who finds the next cure for cancer, then all that we've done is we're good. If you're the next person who starts the next political party that protests what we've done, exercise your freedom of speech and do it to the best you possibly can do. But do something, because Kevin doesn't have the chance to do something. Andrew Grennan is not going to have the chance to do something. John McRae is not going to have a chance to do something. And the list of Canadians who sacrificed themselves so that you can be successful is long. So how does it change me? I get emotional about things. I never got emotional when Canada was played. I always do now. I never used to get emotional about watching a flag go up. I do now. When we put the monument up downtown for Afghanistan and for NATO, I found myself in line with three names that I recognized. And everything that I was going to say was gone as I looked at those names. So you've got to understand, when I watched this play, and I watched what happened when he came home, every single individual who's found himself in combat, in the army, in stressful circumstances or situations, has things that they will never speak of other than in this group. And it's not because we don't think you can handle it. It's not because we don't want to tell you about it, it's because it's private and personal. And sometimes, without a doubt, it affects us. Victoria Day and the 4th of July. You'll see me sitting on a porch, always with a little glass of scotch, and I'll toast those guys that have fallen. This play speaks to the pressures of soldiering. It speaks to the disconnect of home. It speaks to the question of am I good enough? It speaks to the question, why did I survive when that person didn't? It speaks to the question of how will I ever move forward to stop thinking about what I've seen and done to get back to a normal.